The appearance of wild animals in residential areas brings bad experiences like returning to prehistoric times. The man must walk while holding a stick in case the wild turkeys attack. They make leaving home an obsession for indigenous people. After all, how did a species that not long ago was on the brink of extinction across the continent become so widespread? Watch today's video to learn and see how American farmers deal with tens of thousands of wild turkeys. The wild turkey is an iconic American species, having sustained Native Americans for centuries. Through many periods of recession and recovery, the turkey population has returned in overwhelming numbers and has severely affected human life. Currently, it is estimated that there are nearly 6 million wild turkeys found in North America. Locals on the outskirts of Maui, Hawaii, believe that injuries found on pets and other animals in their area were caused by wild turkeys. Wild turkeys can be found on farms year-round, especially during the growing season. They do not directly target plants, but instead unintentionally cause harm when they scratch the soil in search of food like insects. Newly hatched wild turkeys grow rapidly and leave the nest within 12 to 24 hours of hatching. At this time, they are vulnerable to predation by wild boars, lynx and birds of prey. The mortality rate of chicks is highest in the first 14 days of life. This reduces significantly after half a year when they grow closer to adult size. During this time, the hen will try to hide the chicks in a dense layer of feathers to avoid detection and limit death. Wild turkeys often become aggressive during breeding season sometimes even attacking and acting aggressively toward humans. In some areas, it is illegal to feed wild turkeys because when they are familiar with humans, they can consider humans as fellow humans and be in the harsh ranking competition of the herd. This means humans will be easier to attack. This behavior is most common in the fall when young wild turkeys begin to compete with adult wild turkeys in the flock. Turkeys often roost in trees, spending the night on the ground. It is not uncommon for birds to have a favorite roosting tree that they return to night after night. As urban and suburban wild turkey populations grow, so do conflicts between humans and them. Surely you will often encounter wild turkeys wandering on the road and this not only affects the environment but also creates many dangerous traffic situations. This behavior distracts the driver, causes delays and is also the cause of unwanted collisions. Besides, their relentless search for food can destroy gardens and lawns. If you see images of wild turkeys pecking at a car, they are mistaking their reflection for a predator. Let's find out the reasons behind the wild turkey invasion. Some information suggests that this invasion may stem from overbreeding. Each breeding season, they usually lay 10 to 15 eggs per clutch. This leads to large numbers of female turkeys, increasing the risk of invasion and affecting the ecological balance in the area.
For species that can fly like wild turkeys, fences cannot prevent their destruction. Of course, farmers do not let this situation continue. They choose to hunt them down. Net trapping is done, but it takes a lot of time. In the immediate future, hunting is the most effective control measure. Hunters can easily track the tracks left by wild turkeys on the land. These footprints help shorten the search process. In winter, when snow falls, things are easier for hunters. However, the disturbance of wild turkeys is no less. In Illinois, wild turkeys can be hunted during two seasons, one in the fall and one in the spring. They may be hunted with guns or appropriate archery equipment, but local regulations may limit the use of these tools in urban and suburban environments to avoid danger. These fake turkeys act to attract real wild turkeys to the area. The only thing left is to wait, aim accurately at the target and take it down with one shot. Interestingly, this method is quite effective and is used by many hunters. Until they are shot and fall, wild turkeys have no idea that this attractive friend is just a hunting prop. Silence is the key to a successful hunt. Hunters are so careful that they prepare clothes that are almost green in color to camouflage themselves. When the target appears, the timing of the shot is carefully chosen to ensure success. The echoing sound of gunfire, the moment a wild turkey was taken down, marked farmers' resistance to invasive wildlife. The spring wild turkey hunting season in the US lasts from late April to late May. Some farmers cannot concentrate on hunting because everyone is too busy growing crops. That's why early morning hunting sessions like this happen. The invasion of wild turkeys over many decades has had a huge impact on people's culture and life. Instead of living and working as usual, they now have to deal with the problem of invasive wild turkeys. Even children experience and train hunting from a very early age. Through this activity, the next generation will be more aware of the issue of preventing and protecting wildlife in the environment. However, overhunting also has the potential to push them towards the brink of extinction once again. Therefore, all hunting activities must be licensed by the area manager. Cooking wild turkeys after a hunt is a great way to enjoy the rewards of a good hunt. Have you ever eaten wild turkey meat? If so, please leave a comment below and share your thoughts on its taste. Wild turkey meat is a source of protein and healthy fats that are rich in vitamins and minerals. This is a wonderful dish from a dramatic hunting experience combined with fresh and unique flavors. Hunting and cooking wild turkeys is not only a fun activity but also an important part of American culinary culture. In addition, hunting plays an important role in managing wild turkey populations. This helps minimize negative impacts on agriculture and communities, maintaining balance in the ecosystem.
Hello my friends. Agriculture is not only affected by weather factors such as drought or flood. Farmers and ranchers in the United States must also suffer damage from animals such as wild boar, white-tailed deer, coyotes, and wild turkeys. If you live in the suburbs and countryside of Texas or California, chances are you will see deer and wild boars leaving the woods and heading towards the garden in search of food. Although they may seem innocent, they are known to be two of the most destructive wildlife species. In addition, coyotes are also the most annoying predators for cattle ranchers. According to a report by farmers in Texas and California in 2021, wild boar cost them about $1.7 billion. In particular, the vegetable production industry in California has suffered about $650 million in damage caused by wildlife. This is a herd of wild boar in the city of San Antonio in the south of Texas. In recent years, Texas has always been the state with the largest number of wild boar in the country, with about 3.5 to 4 million heads, accounting for nearly half of the country's wild boar population. Female wild boars usually start breeding when they are six months old. Each year, a female wild boar usually has one litter, and the number of piglets born is about 10 to 15. With the ability to reproduce quickly and adapt well, the number of wild boar in the United States has always remained high, even though millions of pigs are killed each year by hunters across the country. Currently, in addition to Texas, wild boar is also very popular in states such as Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and Southern California. It is estimated that each year, this animal causes agricultural losses across the country of about $2.7 billion. Although they are wild animals and often live hidden in the forests, the herds of wild boar do not hesitate to head to the fields when they discover there is an abundant food source. Large fields of corn, vegetables or wheat are often the favourite destinations for wild boar herds. They can even hide and destroy crops there for weeks before leaving. Imagine what would happen if a herd of about 25 wild boars visited your corn farm and stayed there for one week. Considered an invasive species and extremely harmful to agriculture, in the United States, wild boar is considered an unprotected animal. Most states in the United States encourage people to trap and hunt wild boar without a limit to minimize their impact on agriculture. After being trapped, these wild boars will be killed by humans before being brought home to be processed or sold to restaurants. It is estimated that every year between 2.5 and, and 3 million wild boars are killed by hunters. However, this does not reduce the number of invasive species because their ability to reproduce and adapt is very good. Many farmers even kill dozens of wild boar and do not bother to pick up their carcasses just because they are so used to wild boar meat. In addition to wild boar, Coyotes are also one of the most annoying animals for ranchers 
in the United States. Today, coyotes are found in every state of the United States except for Hawaii, and there is almost no animal in the United States better adapted to changing conditions than this one. Female coyotes normally become pregnant when they reach one year old, and the gestation period lasts just two months. Thanks to the ability to adapt to extremely good living conditions and few natural enemies, the number of coyotes in the United States has always increased rapidly. According to estimates by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, California is home to the largest number of coyotes, with about 750,000 creatures. This number may actually be much different in reality, because the ability of this animal to reproduce is very good. Coyotes spend most of the day roaming the forests, and at night time is usually the time when they go foraging. This is also the time when many coyotes come close to livestock farms to feed. Their food is usually small rodents and the carcasses of dead animals. In addition, it is not uncommon for coyotes to attack and kill farm animals. According to USDA statistics, each year in the United States, about 117,000 livestock animals are killed by coyotes. This is also the wild animal that is responsible for the most loss of life. To limit the impact of coyotes on agriculture and to prevent population explosions of this species, most states allow the hunting of this animal for 12 months of the year. Each year, hunters in the US kill about 550,000 coyotes, and most coyotes killed live fairly close to livestock farms. When it comes to animals that damage US agriculture, the white-tailed deer cannot be ignored. Even more, the damage caused by this animal to American farmers is greater than wild boar. Currently, there are about 36.7 million deer living in the United States, of which the number of white-tailed deer accounts for 81%. Basically, the behavior of white-tailed deer is quite similar to wild boar they usually spend most of their time wandering in the forests. When spotted next to the living areas where there are fields or crops, the white deer will not miss the opportunity to feed. According to USDA estimates, in June 2022, white-tailed deer cost US agriculture about $2.5 billion. This species is responsible for 58% of crop losses and 33% of vegetable loss across the country. In addition, the white-tailed deer is also the cause of hundreds of traffic accidents each year across the country. According to estimates by the National Deer Association, about 6.1 white-tailed deer are killed by hunters across the country each year, making it the most hunted animal in the United States. 